Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Today we're doing a pack T test. Well, I'm skipping the pack part because we already did precision accuracy and consistency with both of the bullets I'll be using today. That is the Federal 124 grain HST. This is the 9mm Luger I'll be using today, uh, HKVP9. The second bullet that I'll be using is the Sierra or Sig Sauer V Crown. Both of these are in 124 grain bullets. Uh, I've already done the precision accuracy and consistency as I already mentioned in previous videos. We'll put the link in the description below. But uh, today we're going to be doing two different barrier tests in this 20% ballistic gelatin, clear ballistic ballistic gelatin considered a NATO block. I'll be shooting from seven yards with a hard barrier and then with a soft barrier. Now the hard barrier is a little bit of cardboard but the Formica laminate is inside there as well as uh, a little bit of sweatshirt material on the very outside. So it's going to go into the sweatshirt material, a little bit of cardboard, very thin cardboard, Formica laminate, a little bit of cardboard, then into the ballistic gelatin. Soft barrier test, just going to be using the uh, sweatshirt material. We're going to see how these two bullets perform hard barrier and then soft barrier. Well, I've already done a hard barrier test for the Sierra uh, V-Crown, so I'm going to skip the hard barrier again uh, and then focus just on the soft barrier for that bullet. I think we got it set up. Let's go ahead and start shooting. Second round today, same bullet, 124 grain Federal HST. Everything else is exactly the same, but now I'm using a soft barrier, just a little bit of that sweatshirt material. Okay, last round today. This is the Sig Sauer or Sierra V Crown, 124 grain bullet, seven yards, everything else pretty much exactly the same. Soft barrier test. I'm going to try to put this one a little bit lower and to the left. See if I can get it where I need it. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'll note that prior to shooting these 9mm rounds, I did put one 45 ACP round in that. You may have caught that video just a few weeks ago. But anyway, the very first round we fired was the hard barrier test. It went all the way through that first block and ended up in the second block. Let's take a look at that second block now. And this is, you know, fairly opaque. It's been uh, shot and remelted a number of times and so I'm not absolutely certain where that bullet is now it could be there if it traveled that far into it or there's another spot right there maybe that path we're looking at right there that's definitely not it that's from a rifle round I put into it a while ago maybe it's also notice that dark uh, spot on the left side that would indicate just a little bit of penetration after it passed through the first block okay the second round that I fired was the soft barrier test and we can see that bullet 
on near the top in that path near the top of this gel block. And then the third round I fired was the V-crown and that is its final position. What I'm pointing at now is the HST with soft barrier and that is the difference in penetration that we're seeing. Also notice that that V-crown kind of did a little bit of a nose dive after it entered in. It went exactly where I wanted it to, but it did travel in a somewhat downward path, which is a little bit different than what I'm expecting, uh, simply because the V-crown tends to travel in a nice straight path. So maybe something happened with, as it was passing through that soft barrier. I'm not sure. We'll learn an awful lot more when we pull these bullets out, weigh them, measure them, etc. Boy, do I have some really interesting stuff to share with you about the bullet that I pulled out of the ballistic gelatin. Well, let me not get ahead of myself. What bullet am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the 9mm 124 grain Federal HST bullet. We shot two rounds with that bullet today, and the first was through the hard barrier. And like we've seen so many times, that bullet passed right through the hard barrier, right through the first gel block, and then into that second gel block. Now that second gel block has been uh, remelted quite a number of times. In fact, the first gel block now has also been remelted once. It's pretty clear still, but that second gel block is getting fairly opaque still has a good density to it, so it's still a very, very good test block, but it's not so dramatic, I guess, to look at it. Uh, and then the second bullet that we shot, again, same bullet, 124 grain HST, but this time we use the soft barrier. What I'm excited about is the hard barrier test. Let me tell you about what's so exciting. This is my bullet right here. I recovered it. It did not pass all the way through, and uh, number two, I didn't really think it would, but also it actually expanded. It actually expanded. I don't know where it started expanding. I suspect it started expanding between gel blocks one and two. It, it certainly did expand, and that is a very, very good sign. I noted just a little bit ago when we were out at the range that every one of these jacketed hollow points don't expand. It's like a, um, uh, sort of like a full metal jacket. Uh, we also shot that third bullet today. We shot the uh, Sierra Sig Sauer V-Crown bullet. It was a soft barrier test, but previously, and we'll talk uh, a little bit more about the previous test, but let me just tell you this. When we tested the Sierra V-Crown with a hard barrier test previously, uh, that bullet passed, ripped right on through the first gel block. I didn't back it up with a second gel block, so I never did recover that one. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should shoot that one again and see if the Sierra V crown does expand in the second block, as does the Federal HST. So I, I'm only going to guess about that, and what we have is what we have. But let me focus on the Federal HST. For the hard barrier test, we had a depth of penetration of 17 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, we saw no jacket and core separation. 100% of that bullet's weight was retained, a full 124 grains. The diameter of the retrieved bullet was 0.652 of an inch, about two-thirds of an inch. That, that means it expanded 183.6 or 184 percent. The length of the retrieved bullet was 0 0.436 and I always like to make that measurement remember because that tells us something about how well that bullet will drive in a straight line uh, within that target. Um, a bullet with a sufficiently long shank will tend to drive straight. Uh, in the ballistic gelatin or uh, in the target. That goes for big game animals. I've seen that work really, really well as a very good indicator of that. Overall, the Federal HST scored 312.5 points. 
not the greatest score, but then again, this is passing through that hard barrier. Now, you might argue also, that's not much of a hard barrier. Uh, how much of a hard barrier do you need to get it to do that sort of thing, zipping all the way through the first gel block, or I'm almost certain did not expand at all um, throughout most of that uh, first gel block. So uh, I don't know where that little sweet spot is, but we did have that quite hard formica in there, and maybe, you know, just a couple of sheets of cardboard, it would act differently. I don't know. We could go on forever looking at those sort of tests. But this is our hard barrier test, and now let's talk about the soft barrier test, that little bit of sweatshirt material. Here we see a depth of penetration of 11.25 or 11 and a quarter inches, 100% weight retention, 0 0.608 uh, diameter of the retrieved bullet expansion of 171.2%. Notice that is actually a smaller uh, amount of expansion than we saw with the hard barrier test. That's kind of interesting. Length of the retrieved bullet 0 0.378. That is also smaller than we saw with the hard barrier test. But the overall score a very very nice 422.5 points and whenever we get we break above 400 points uh, that's out of a total of 500 points, we are talking about a very good, or looking at a very good bullet. Now, the other bullet that I shot today was the Sig Sauer Sierra V Crown. Shot one of those rounds today only through soft barrier. And that bullet, you know, it did pretty darn well also. A little bit more depth of penetration, 13 and 3 quarter inches, 100% weight retention, um, not quite as much expansion, only 155% expansion, but a nice uh, 0.465 of an inch retained length. That is really comparable to the retained length, actually a little bit lo longer retained length than what we saw with the Federal HST going through that hard barrier, but quite a bit additional retained length compared to the HST through the soft barrier. When all that comes together, we ended up with a score of 367 some points. That is okay, but quite a bit less than what we saw with the uh, Federal HST. You know, we've shot both of these bullets before, and in fact, both of these bullets have now been shot through bare ballistic gelatin, hard barrier, and soft barrier. Most of those tests were done using the H&K VP9 pistol, but uh, one of my early tests did use a Beretta 92FS uh, pistol. And always, you know, relatively uh, comparable, I would say. I don't know that we're going to see much of an effect due to the pistol itself. But I throw that out there kind of just uh, FYI for you. Now, when we look at some of these previous tests, the bare ballistic gelatin, where we did a full pack T test, and by the way, I'll put a link to those tests videos uh, in the description below, so you can check those out if you haven't seen them already. Uh, but the HST was, is considered a plus P type of ammo. We got over 1,200 feet per second recorded with the chronograph. That was the average velocity and, uh, and 1,100 and some feet per second uh, with my reload uh, for the V-Crown bullet. So the more I shoot this Federal HST, the more I'm liking it. And in fact, it was one of you who had recommended it would like to see a test with the HST. And uh, ever since I started doing those tests with this particular bullet, it has been doing well, consistently well through all three of our tests. So thank you for that recommendation. I've actually had a chance to pick up a couple extra boxes of that factory ammo. The only downside, as far as I can see, with the Federal HST bullet is it's not a reloadable component. You cannot buy those bullets uh, and reload them yourself. It's strictly, at least at this point, a factory uh, option. Advantage, then, of the Sierra or Sig Sauer V-Crown is it is pretty readily available 
uh, as a bullet to reload with. Hey, I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you've got some ideas for other bullets you'd like to see us test, maybe some more 9mm bullets, 45 ACP bullets, or some rifle bullets, uh, we might be able to do that for you. Uh, so that's, it's always kind of fun for me to do these different tests, especially the full pack T tests, and, and put these bullets to the test all around. Until next time, take care.